Hey guys, how's it going? Paul Harris here. So this video is going to be on Excel pivot tables and graphs, okay? So I've done five videos. This is going to be the fifth one and final one of this series where I basically try and do a comprehensive view of people who are less familiar with Excel or have no knowledge of Excel and bring them up to speed in what they need to know if you're going into, say, an account and finance role or like an auditing role. And these are basically essential tools that you need. So first video was on basic Excel, panel, formatting. Second was on shortcuts. I did simple formula harder formulas. This video, like I say, is going to be on pivot tables and graphs. It'll basically just get you up to speed with what they do, how you uh, use them, uh, little tips and tricks in terms of how I format these pivot tables and graphs in order to uh, get the most out of them, basically, and just some little tricks along the way. So hopefully it's useful. Let's get into it. So if you see my other videos, you're going to be familiar with this table, okay? So I've modified it slightly from my other videos, but what you essentially have here is the owner, the brand, um, month of the year, liters, current year units, units, the price and the overall revenue of basically cars and car sales across uh, a set year, okay? So this is a, a typical set of data that you might see when you're reviewing information within a finance and accounting role. So as you can see, the data is not very user-friendly. It's, it's just a long list of data and it's hard to see, let's say, the progress throughout the year. So you got 2020 information, and if, and if I scroll down, you can see there's actually 2021 information here. So effectively a, a forecast, let's say. So it doesn't matter what the year is, but um, it'll just give an indication of why you need to use pivot tables. So one thing I like to do first when I have a set of data like this, where there's a date column, so it's not split out, it just shows the exact date and not months and years, is I will split out sometimes these uh, columns into months and years. So I'm going to do this quickly, create two new columns, and one formula that I use is equals month. And then when you search for that, and then choose number, you can see it says one. And then one thing you can do here by the side is go down this list and create 1 to 12 format and then go down and go Jan right down to December and then what I'm going to basically do is a VLOOKUP between these two. That's also a neat trick here is if you want to get quarters, so quarterly data, um, but you don't have a quarterly row, what I might want to do as well is add, say, here you can go Q1, um, Q2, Q3, Q4, okay, and then what you can do is a VLOOKUP again to go, look, I want to have this data in quarters. So what I'm basically doing is creating a load of columns where I can effectively review the information within a pivot table later in a more effective way. So here we go, I have quarters there. Maybe I want to separate out years as well. You go equals year, you select the actual date, you change this to number, and you can see I have 2020 there, and if I scroll down it'll say 2021. So what I've effectively done there is brought out the month, quarter, and year. Now, now I have a set of data where I can start breaking it down into a pivot table. So what a pivot table effectively allows you to do is change this set of data in a very quick way into uh, where you can see it's all just rows. You can change some of the data to make it into columns and it will it'll make your workflow a lot quicker when you know how to manipulate pivot tables. So it'll become more clear when I show you. So you have to firstly select the entire table and you go insert pivot table. 
And generally speaking, I just click OK to this, and you can see here it says New Work Worksheet. What you might want to do is create the pivot table just to the right-hand side of this table. If you want to do that, you click on Existing Worksheet, and then click the cell that you want the pivot table to arrive at. So I only want to click onto New Worksheet, it'll create a new tab, and here you have a pivot table setup. So what you effectively do now is you can manipulate the data however you want using columns, rows, and the value. So, and you can put filters on it. So it's a very useful uh, thing to be able to do. If I choose, for instance, month, I can select on month, and I have to bring this month over to the column table. And you can see here it's created all the columns for the months. But if you remember, I actually had years in this table. So what I can do is actually bring the years function into the rows. And you can see now a matrix is being formed with all the data from the previous table. So now all I can do is I can bring in the revenue. And you can see now how much easier it is to review the data. It's basically consolidated it in a very quick and effective way. And that's a very simple pivot table. Now, you can start adding more and more columns now. So if I bring in owners into the rows, you can start to see that underneath the 2020 box, you have all the owners. And you can see that it's abbreviated it, so it's sort of done a sum if function on all the owner categories within each of the months. So it's made an abbreviated table, and really, that is as simple as it gets in terms of how you can use pivot tables. You just keep dragging in the items that you're interested in. Now, say I wanted the owners to actually be in the filters section and the brands to be here. What I can now do is filter here to say, look, all I want to see is BMW. And it'll bring up all the BMW group items within that list. So that's how you can add a filter section. Now you might realize here that the revenue is summed, okay? So you can see here it says sum of revenue. Now, generally speaking, a lot of the time that is what you're going to see. What you want to see is the sum. But occasionally, say you have price. Now, if you brought the price function in, all of a sudden you can see values has gone to columns. Now, I don't want it to say Jan and then sum of revenue, sum of price. I want the values to be um, at the top here within the rows because it's a lot easier to see so you can bring it down and manipulate the table to make it as simple to look look at as possible now what it's done here is it's summed the price now I might not want to sum the price so you press this little button here you right click and it brings up this uh, looking box the pivot table field and now you can change it to say how you would like the data to be represented so maybe you want a count of all the items that are featured within this um, matrix. But I don't, so it's, because it's price, maybe I wanna see what the average price of the vehicles are per this category. So I press OK, and now it'll change the average price that I sold BMWs or Minis and Rolls Royces at within that subcategory. Another feature here is, if I just undo this filter, you can see it says 2020 here, and then it has all the um, brands going down. Now, if I brought in owner, as well into the rows, all of a sudden the data starts to look a bit unmanageable and it's hard to see what's going on. So you have 2020, you have BMW, and then you have all the groups underneath, but it's looking like a whole load of separate data. You might not want to look at it in this way. So what I mean by that is you can right click, and what you can do is you can go to pivot table options. And that'll bring up this pivot tables options box. I'm using a Mac, it'll be exactly the same on a PC. So you go to display and you click here, classic pivot table layout. Click on this, click OK, and all of a sudden it brings up the box like this. So all of a sudden, as you put more and more rows in, it's created a box somewhat like the data set that you'd previously seen. So if you only wanted to segregate out the columns by month, of the data you previously had, but you want to recreate the table in every other regard, that's how you can basically do it. You, you go to the classic pivot table option. Then you have to unfortunately manually remove all the subtotals. So I'll remove 2020 here. You can see now that the data is categorized in a lot more pleasant way to review the data. However, maybe you want the data to be shown 
repeating down the line. So you see it says revenue at the top or 2020 at the top. But say you want to perform a sum if function on this table. Well, you couldn't do that because if you sum if on BMW, you wouldn't capture all the BMW groups for January. So what you'd have to do, what you basically need to do is you need to right click, click field settings and then say repeat items. And then it will create a listing of all the repeated items in that list. Another useful trick is if you want to add and make uh, the filters box, so obviously you could add the filter box by clicking on this and it would add this little box here. Say you want to make it look a bit more presentable and make it a bit more obvious for people who are reviewing the pivot table later. What you can do is you can click on pivot table analysis and then go insert slicer. And then you can see it's basically produced a lot nicer looking filter box which you can then click on the quarters you want or you can click on this box and then click on the multiple quarters and it'll allow you to filter the table. The next thing I'm going to show you is if you have to add an extra field onto this pivot table that isn't already within the data set that you, that you have in the previous tab. So what I mean by that is say for instance that we have the revenue, we have the units and we want to create this time the average price okay so let's assume that even though you can do that within the pivot table in the way that i showed you what you can do is add a field with simple multiplications and divides and adds between two separate fields so in this case what i'm going to do is go to this pivot table fields and you can see i have the revenue selected here and i want to drag in the units I want the sum of the number of units. And now I want to create a separate field where it's basically going to take the revenue and divide it by the number of units. So the way you do this is by clicking Shift, Control, Plus. This brings up this field box. And you can create now your own field by adding in simple formulas here. So I want to create here average price, you now V2. You select the revenue, you insert the field, then I go divide by the units, I select that field, and then I press enter, and now it's created me an average, the sum of the average prices in this field here. So that's the way you can add in a separate field to your table that doesn't already exist within the previous table. So it's good for things like if you just need to add or divide or uh, subtract two of the different cells within that table without having to go back to the data source, adding a new column in, and then creating that field to then refresh the pivot table. Another thing you might want to do with this pivot table in this view is create a separate formula below. Now, one thing I don't like about pivot tables is that when you try and create a formula on a pivot table, as you can see here, it does this funny thing of get pivot data. So when I try and divide between two numbers. It creates it, but when I drag across, it generally creates errors, see? All of a sudden it's just dragging across the one formula that I chose. It doesn't drag everything across, which is not very useful when you're trying to analyze the data within a pivot table. But what you can do is you click on the pivot table and you go to pivot table analysis. What you effectively need to do is you go to the options section here and you can see this is ticked, generate get pivot data. You untick that option and now all of a sudden when I go down here and I want to create average price, if you don't want to have to do it within the pivot table, you can now click on the options and you see all of a sudden it's going as if I'm just clicking on the cells. I'm no longer getting that formula so now when I pull across the pivot table will act like all the other cells within Excel. It won't act like the regular pivot table that you generally see. So that's quite a useful trick. Another useful shortcut is if you want to remove fields, you press Control minus and it just removes it automatically. Sometimes you get loads of options on pivot tables and instead of right clicking and having to delete the options, just by clicking Control minus and just deleting huge groups of them is quite a useful tool to be able to use. You know what, that's pretty much a lot of what you can use pivot tables for and a lot of the tricks that I do and a lot of the things that I've generally picked up on how to increase the speed in which I use pivot tables. Um, obviously with pivot tables as well, if you want to create 
Uh, another useful thing with it is that you create the pivot table and if you need to just see the data related to a certain field you can double click on say I want uh, revenue Saab if you double click on the grand total here it'll just bring up the Saab information which is another quite interesting thing to be able to use um, so that's a, a lot quicker way if you just want to filter data and that's pretty much where I'll leave off with pivot tables and now what I'll show you is just quickly how to generate graphs, okay? There's, there's a lot to do with graphs. I'm just gonna pretty much show you uh, how to generate them. Um, and I'll show you how to sort of generate a waterfall graph. So there's lots of different versions of a graph, but I'm gonna use this data here. So I have the sum of revenue of all these different brands. What I'm gonna do is basically copy this section. So here we go, we have the owner, we have all the uh, months now if I select this data what I always do is just go to insert and I go to recommended charts why do I do that well it just self populates generally exactly what you want so you can click on all these functions and create one manually so you could click on here and select this version but often at times I find it nicer to just click on recommend charts and then it will show you the kind of charts that you might want. Generally speaking, it's pretty spot on with the kind of graphs that you want. So in this case, I might want this line graph and that's pretty much how you can create a line graph. Now you can click on the certain lines and if you want to delete them, you just delete on the lines you don't want. Say here you have millions but let's say for instance i got rid of these lines as well all of a sudden you have a graph here with two lines where it starts at six million and maybe i don't want it to look like millions maybe i want to abbreviate that to say you know 6m for instance instead of six million so what you can do is you can click on here and double click and it'll bring up this view this former axis view and to create a minimum option, you basically have to go to this minimum section. You can see there's the paint. This is how you design basically your graph. So I go to the bounds minimum. You can go here and click on six million. Click OK and you can see it drags it down. Another way of doing it is by refreshing, but it'll go back to the original view. So I go six million. Click enter. And that's how you can change that view. Now, if you go down here to number view, another thing I find quite useful is you have the format code here. Now, if I want to format the number, say I just want it to be 6.6. .6. I've shown you how to do this in the past, but I can format the number like this. Click add. And all of a sudden I have six. What I can do now is effectively add a uh, chart element. So here I want to add an axis and I can go axis titles vertical and then I can create an axis here and say uh, revenue and then do millions to represent what I'm showing. And you can add lots of other different items by going onto the whole format section, or sorry, chart design. You can add different elements here, like grid lines and other like trend lines, etc. So lots of different things you can do here. It's pretty much endless. So as I showed you before, I basically deleted those areas. So as you can see, it just shows that if you click on the line, you can see the area in which you have selected and you can drag them to select the area and I have another area here. But if you needed to add the lines back in, the way you need to do that is by right clicking, select data. It'll bring up this um, view. This is a lot different to the view within the PC. I think the PC is a lot better actually at manipulating Excel, but say I wanted to add in a separate row, you can click on to add here and then, and then you basically select the name of the row. So Saab and then you go to Y values and then you can select the values. Click OK. And it hasn't shown. The reason why it hasn't shown is now because it's lower than the 6 million mark. You refresh that and you can see where Saab is. 
So that's basically graphs. A lot of it is just you have to trial and error. I know that's a lot with Excel anyway, but that's basically how you can create a quick graph. I'm going to show you waterfalls because that's quite a useful trick as well. And then, uh, and then that's probably going to be the last thing I'll show on this video. So waterfalls. What do I mean by waterfalls? Well, say you have um, Saab here and you have the current year revenue and you have here last year uh, sorry ly revenue and this could be so let's sum this and then say this is 40 million what you effectively have is a difference there that often at times you need to be able to represent in a graph by saying well is some of it because of the yield? Is some of it because of commercial factors? And you want to be able to disaggregate the differences between those two numbers. So I'm going to find out what the difference is first. So half of that number is commercial factors. So that's 8 million. So all of a sudden we have the current year bridging the gap between 23 million and 40 million is this 8 million. Let's say you want a subtotal in there. So you want to say, right, we're going to stop there at the waterfall. I'm going to say 23 million plus the 8 million. What does that give me? Well, a subtotal of 31 million. You have 8 million more to bridge the gap. I'm going to say that 4 million of that is yield and 4 million of that is volume of sales. And that's going to create a simple waterfall. So now if I select this area here and I go to recommend charts, it's not so easily, it doesn't represent it very easily. So what you have to do is you have to click here and you have to go to this, this little bar here, which is the waterfall bar. Click OK and you can see here it creates a waterfall. But the waterfall isn't correct, is it? Because it's just continually going up. What you need to do is you need to change these boxes to say that some of them are totals. So this is a total, set as total over here. And this is a total, set as total. And all of a sudden you can see, and I need to set this one as total as well. And all you can see, these have changed different colors. Now, if you want to change them quite simply, you go over here and you click on the total section, and then you can go to the home and you can change these so all of them change to gray. Now, sometimes you have decreases and you could effectively do the same thing, but we don't have decreases. And that's how you can create a waterfall chart quite quickly and that's what, how you can create it with a bridge there like a subtotal bridge and that's basically it that's what I'm going to show you today pivot tables graphs hopefully you found that interesting useful probably learned something hopefully and that's basically it that's five videos on Excel broke down the basics to some more advanced kind of stuff Hopefully you can use the formulas against pivot tables. You can now sort of slowly create models by being able to drag across and understand that when you're freezing cells, how to do that to operate Excel more effectively. And that's basically a quite comprehensive view of Excel, in my opinion. If you know all that stuff, you're gonna be quite good. You'll know a lot more than me when I came out of university and I started doing audit and I was like, I don't even know how to operate Excel very well. So something that I didn't do hugely during university and it's just I have had to pick it up over the years. The main technique that I've used is every time you spend ages trying to do something and it's taking longer than five minutes or 10 minutes, there's going to be a quicker formula or a quicker way in which you should operate Excel. And the best thing I can say to do is don't settle with the understanding that you have and go, oh, I just do it this way or I've started this job and someone used to do it a certain way and I've just continued doing it. Try and improve and Google how you can improve on a formula or a way that you work on Excel. And that's just gonna speed up your overall workflow. So that would be my overall advice when operating Excel, don't settle. Um, I do know how to do things like macros. I do know how to um, operate Excel um, and know more nifty tricks. If people actually watch this Excel and I get uh, views and that people find it useful, I might make some additional videos to help people maybe with some more advanced stuff. But that's pretty much it. Hopefully you've enjoyed these five videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.